What's up, everyone? This is David, a.k.a. Reverse Long with the Friendly Bear Podcast. Today, I got Lucas Marine uh, on the podcast. He's he's a trader from the Tim Sykes Challenge uh, chat room that I've been in contact with for a while now. He's one of the, the few people that's up really early in the morning, or I guess he's in a different time zone. He's in Brazil, and uh, he, I've noticed him, um, you know, trades very similar to the way I do in the in the pre-market, and um, which is great, you know, uh, because it's not that many people that trade in the pre-market to begin with. So, like, having a different set of eyeballs, like, around, because some of the stuff, it, it's like quick trades that pop up out of nowhere, like, it, over here in, uh, in the United States, like, three in the morning, you know, you got to pay attention. So, like, it's good to have a different set of eyeballs, few sets of eyeballs on the, on these things. And, um, yeah, and Lucas has been, like, my, uh, like, a trading buddy of mine now for, for like a month or so, you know, that, and he's been in the chat room before that, but now we've been coordinating a lot more in the pre-market and it's, it's been good to have uh, a, a, a trading buddy, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and now I have a few trading buddies now and Lucas uh, as well. So um, with that being said, what's up, Lucas, how you doing? Hey, David, thank you so much for the opportunity to be here. It's a pleasure. Like, as I was saying before, like for like six months, I've been watching your podcast and hoping that one day I will be here because uh, uh, also, like I'm learning a lot from you guys. Yeah, and uh, that's that's really a pleasure to be here. And uh, thank you so much. Absolutely, man. Um, well, you, you know what you've learned uh, has been cool for the pre market because, like, the strategy for the pre market is, it, I want to say it's pretty straightforward, but you know, it's it's um it's different than regu- than the regular hours. You know what I mean? And You've been able to execute it, and I've seen your profit chart. It's it's good, steady. You're 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 trading well, and you're trading, you know, as it, as improved is always improving. And also, I wanted to mention, Lucas has a YouTube channel that's like in, in trading in Portuguese. So you're trying to educate like the Brazilians. I'm I'm thinking, I'm guessing. Yeah, that's the main point. I, I can't introduce you like introduce my history here. Like I have more uh-huh. than fifteen. I have more than fifteen years of trading already. Uh-huh. So it's a long journey. And uh, one of the main things, like, let me, let me try to yeah. introduce myself. Like, for sure. I, I started uh, trading in first year college. I joined with some friends of mine and uh, we, we created an investment club. Not sure if, if it's the same in the US. Probably, yes, it's the same idea. Like, yeah. you join some friends, you, find, you, 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 you fundraise some money and you start trading and you think you know everything and you don't know anything, right? And uh, I did some um, technical last analysis, some courses and like in the like five months, I already broke my account <laughs> uh-huh. with all the money that there wasn't my money. So it's yeah. worth it. But after that, I started studying more and uh, I had the opportunity to be, to work in Credit Suisse brokerage house oh, so i spent okay. five years there working there uh and I, and i became a trader equity trader over there only on the brazilian market so probably you guys don't know anything about brazilian market but we have like 500 stocks <laughs> tickers over there it's, it's pretty 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 small it's uh-huh. really small but I, I learned a lot because of course i was trading for foreign foreign clients and brazilian uh, all institutional clients. So my main job was like managing algorithms. So I, I had like 500 algorithms trading in the same time, all all like all over the day orders, uh, uh, volume uh, like perceive. Uh, what's the name? It's like uh, when you trade, like for example, there's a, one type of execution when you like uh, I want to be 20 percent of the volume. So, for example, if if it's if a stock trades ten uh, ten thousand shares, you're gonna be buying two thousand shares. So it's uh-huh. one another type of execution. But like the main idea, I was trading a uh, huge amount of huge huge amount of money. For example, one day in a MSCI rebalance, I traded three hundred million reais, which is around seventy million million dollars uh, that day. So which it's a lot of exposure and it's a lot of knowledge uh, doing IPOs and a lot of stuff, which was like my school training. Exactly. So, and after so that, you, 
Uh-huh. Oh, all right. No, no, no. Yeah, I was gonna ask. Um, so you got into trading American stocks first, and then you as as like an investment club, and or is that was that Brazilian stocks? Everything Brazilian at, at that time. I got you. Okay. So what happened next after I I I, I went out uh, credit Swiss, and then I, I like went to entrepreneurship, started a, a e-commerce business. And like another story for one day, maybe. Uh-huh. Uh, but bro, I went to bankruptcy. And so I started a new business, fundraise it. It's like 550 employees. And then we went bankruptcy. But then after that, like I, I started to, for, for this whole time, I have, I've been trading only Brazilian stocks, like Brazilian market. And one thing that every like every day that I was trading, I was feeling that something like in Brazil, we only trade uh, index future and dollar future. In Brazil, we, we don't we only talk about these types of trading, like technical analysis and see, for example, the, like the, the traders who only trade uh, SPY, yeah. for example. And like there's so much thing, so much things to to be to be. Uh, learned and so much things to be traded that something that was going in my mind, I need to learn more. I need to get out of like the small box that I'm in Brazil. Because of course, when I was trading in, in, in grad Suisse, I was trading lots of markets. So I traded in Colombia, I traded in Chile, but like only executing orders for other clients. And uh, when I started uh, one day, uh, See, after I, I went bankrupt, my, my, my company, I needed to, to, to get some money in Brazil and uh, bring it to U.S. To protect, protect myself, like it's Brazilian stuff, about, uh, yeah. the way the, the things work here. And I, I was with, with my money in U.S. I started an interactive broker's account. And I, what I'm going to do with this money? Where I'm going to like invest? So at that time, it, it was uh, 2019. And I said, let, let me like let me study some market and like invest. And I, and I went to the cannabis market that time. It was the hype of the hype of the hype yeah. of the hype. So I like remember. in one year, without like trading anything, I made a hundred percent. Like only placing like five uh, bets in five companies, and that was it. And and I, after that, when I made like a hundred percent, I said, what now? What I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do? I don't wanna, I want, I don't wanna invest in like Netflix uh, and Google because like they don't have, they don't have volatility. So I, I need something else. And that, that's when I uh, went across Timothy Sykes and started uh, learning all the things about because I didn't know back then. But I was like the companies that I had invested was like OTCs or yeah, I don't know yeah. penny stocks and then like in that matter. So I see. Uh, what year was that that you joined uh, the Timothy Sykes? Two thousand, like February two thousand twenty-one. Oh, so recently. Okay, yeah. so this was like the whole journey. Oh, okay. Um, now Brazilian stocks is so is it f- only five hundred stocks? I think American stocks. How many American stocks are there? Like ten thousand, twenty thousand, or something like that. Yeah, it's what I like. What I've studied, it's around five thousand listed companies and more than ten thousand OTCs. Wow. So the so the Brazilian market, like it's not known for people to do like trade and, and uh, short sell and, and all this craziness. We do, of course, sh- short sell, but we, we, all you trade is like futures. So it's it's I not see. the same thing. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not the same structure of like mindset is completely, completely different. It's only technical analysis. So th- what so did you did that help? Like knowing the technical analysis of the sure. previous two? Yeah. I see. Yeah, for sure. But like uh, now, I can enjoy all the knowledge that I like yeah. where, where we can in the in the in the the chat room. Like I can see that we all like we we are here. We all join all the knowledge, technical, yeah. fundamental, and and of course level two. So we we can bring it all together to to create like one. Of course, we have a bias. Everybody's short bias over there. But we are like of course. I have a, a really good example that I tell everybody here from Brazil. Like, there's one stock I don't remember. I don't remember the name that they it, it was going up like five fifty uh, percent, and the, like the they they had closed a, a contract a deal with a partnership, uh, five million dollars. Whoa, it's five million dollars contracts, 
I said, I don't know, like maybe that's not even close to, to <laughs> what's supposed to be. And I went to like sec feelings and I, I watched it like the revenue, the, the yearly revenue was around a uh, hundred, a hundred million. So it was like 5% increase in revenue annually. And it was going up 50%. It doesn't make any sense. So it, it, it doesn't need to be that, like you don't have to be so specific, uh, you, you don't have to know so much to, to understand this type of things, right? So mm-hmm. it, it's crazy how how people overreact about stocks and that makes a lot of opportunities. And that's a lot of, another thing, like uh, when you trade, for example, uh, futures, it's a really uh, optimized, it's an if, if efficient market. And like, it, it's completely different what we have here in penny stocks. That's the, the re- beauty and the opportunity over there. So... That's it. That's the, so my, you, my main history. <laughs> gotcha. So you started with interactive brokers and then what, what got you started? Like, okay, I, I know the time zone there. What, what city in Brazil are you in? I'm in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo. Okay. So yes. Sao Paulo is, okay. Uh, when New York time, how much difference from the New York time? One hour. It's only one seven, hour. Yeah. It's 7 PM right now. So what, so, okay. So what got you started to do the pre-market? Because if it's only one hour difference, it's still really early. Yeah. Yeah, it is. What happened? Uh, after that, I went, uh, I started uh, Team Sykes course. Uh, I started trading only OTCs long. That was my beginning. And my biggest trade okay. that I, yeah. I was like finding my trade, it was like, man, it was uh, uh, 862% my trade. <laughs> you want to talk about well, that one before we continue? Yeah, yeah. I had a, it was like, it's one type of strategy that you, you need to be really, really quick. And that's why I love uh, interactive brokers, scanners. Yeah. Because like, for example, there's some stocks that they went, uh, it's like market makers. They, they only, they dumped stocks for like 90% and they, they went back like in, in a few seconds. If you, if you can be there to get like the, the, the ask that it's being on the 90% down, it's only it's completely inefficient what is going on over there. And then like once that trade was less than a minute, they went down ninety percent. Probably they they, they it, was, wow. it was a fat finger. I don't know. It was a fat 90, finger. It went, so it went down ninety percent in one minute and popped right back up. Yeah. And you were that's able to. Was, and, and it, you got it, it. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it, you got it executed. Like I, I I went. I I bought it at zero point zero five, and in like one minute, two minutes. I can see it in the description. It went to 0.49. <laughs> wow. So it's crazy. So that only happens like OTCs. It, it only happens in OTCs. Like those crazy, yeah. Like at that time when OTC, it was in May 21. So th- at that time, OTCs were really hot. So it, it happens like once in a month, something like that. Not like with this percentage gain, but I can see like 100% gains. Uh, in one minute or two minutes. But what, what happens is everybody, uh, the, I'm not a perfect trader. Everybody uh, has their weaknesses. And one mm-hmm. of my weaknesses is when I'm buying a stock, I'm usually uh, not that, uh, I'm stubborn and, uh, and I keep back holding the stock. Yeah. And that's, that's like one thing <laughs> that I need to improve. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so that's why I started. And one other, another thing that I was, uh, my main strategy on OTCs was uh, when they went, uh, they spiked, they went supernova and they came back. I use a lot of Fibonacci. I told you already that I use uh, to, but, but, but at, at that time I used to find uh, supports to get long, but it was only uh, every time it was after the supernova. And like all the trades that I was doing, it was the same movement going up and going down. And I said, come on, man, why I'm trying to find the deep if all the stocks went, went come, uh, they, they went down. <laughs> so yeah. that's what started uh, making me uh, watching the, the, the short sell side. And- uh, When was this? What, what, what it, month was this? It was, I started short selling on August last year. Okay, so you went from the OTCs to but, but at that time, I wasn't trading pre-market. Uh-huh. 
I started learning from you guys, like what you guys were doing, what you guys were seeing, like Michael uh, with this with the two steps. Uh, yeah. Framework. So before you continue, yeah, I just wanted to mention whoever's listening. Michael Matthews and I we trade a lot in the pre market, and Michael's made a lot of videos. Well, not a lot. A few. A lot. He's actually made really good videos breaking down the patterns. And I actually, I'm profitly. I have like 90 videos of like uh vlogs of like my trades in the pre-market in 2020 um that usually no one listens to and all that but um the few people that have listened to it like sam putnam and lucas uh, has heard a lot of them too it's been very helpful on the and um i've been in touch with people like that to trade pre-market with so whoever's interested and take it serious i mean it's a it's a it's you got to take it real serious and um it's actually really really beneficial so that's what lucas is referring to i just wanted to mention that yeah, and that's another thing. I'm 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 still not a full time trader. Mm -hmm. um, I I work at financial markets. I have I work in a startup here in Brazil, which is the main uh, startup about uh, algo trading. So we, we 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 like we are a retail algo trading company for people who doesn't know how to to code to to create their own automated strategies for day trades. That's so you do that. So you, you work on that. No. Yeah, I'm a director, business director wow. over there. So that's why I have like two lives. I have my my pre-market and aftermarket uh, yeah. uh, trading uh, in US, and in between I have my my nine to five so job. Works, so this is what Michael Matthews does. He works in the daytime and he makes a, he makes a good money in the pre-market. He doesn't do after hours yet. But uh, you have managed to do take advantage of, of after hours and pre it's great, man. So I'll go trading. So you, I was gonna ask you that. So you did with Credit Suisse something. You mentioned something with algo trading, and now you're doing. I didn't know you're doing this full time. So can you, you, does that have to, anything to do with, with small caps, or do you plan on using some algos? <laughs> yeah, like on Credit Suisse, it was like uh, execute execution algo trading, which is like we don't have to. On, on, on Credit Suisse, we didn't uh, configure uh, when to buy and when to sell. It's like an execution uh, robot. It's like I want to buy uh, one million shares of Apple. Yeah. Buy it over the day, T1. So it, it's like a, only execution. But in, in, in the company that I work, it's called SmartBot. Uh, it, it's, ex it's for uh, executing orders. Like I wanna, if if a, a, a moving average crosses a, 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 a another one, I wanna buy it and I wanna uh, uh, set a, a target price over that uh, amount of uh, points or uh, targets. And that that's mainly what we do. And we we are planning to expand it to to S or and crypto, of course. Wow. And uh, but like talking about penny stocks and how I think about uh, programming and, and now uh, making some algos. I've, I, I, want, I want to do, uh, I, I really want to make one algo for aftermarket only. Because I, I can see a lot of, uh, I don't know if it's like rebalancing, in fun, uh, funds rebalancing, like uh, asset management rebalance, but a lot of uh, stocks, they come to 20%, just like with small amount of stocks and they, when they, they, die, they, yeah. they, they die in the same minute. I, don't, I, I think it's just they need to rebalance the funds so they buy stocks no matter what price it is and they, they, they like crack. That's an interesting I, I, theory. I really yeah, that, that's in so interesting. Yeah. I, I, I want to have an algo that places uh, like the, 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 day, the day is done, 5 p.m., 4 p.m. in U.S. I want to place 20% uh, up orders from the, the closing price. Of course, we of course we need to to have some uh, stop loss because when we have news, we have like mergers yeah. and the stock went like maybe a hundred percent. But if we can, like, I'm pretty sure that this type of algo will be profitable in the long term. I'm pretty you know, sure. You know, it's crazy. So this kind of stuff we're talking about is stuff that usually people keep secret. But like, so many people don't even listen to the whole podcast, and so many people don't even want to trade after hours or pre market. That's why I like this niche, you know, regular hours is a different story. You have the bigger players, everybody's alert, but pre-market and after hours, like you're saying, those kind of moves, they usually sneak by, you know, um, 
that's one th one interesting theory that you had about the the rebalancing. So th there's not many theories though. Okay, so like pre market, I had the theory of these are margin calls happening. Um, could be could be buy ins certain brokers. Um, what people are over leveraged, like when the meme stocks are going crazy, uh, people are shorter or whatever. They they're over leveraged, and now all of a sudden, 4:15 in the morning, I noticed it was 4:15. All of a sudden, uh, they go up. Um, there's certain things going on. So like having having you also be a part of the pre market group, you know, it's very interesting because then we can just collaborate all these different theories and refine it. You know what I mean? Which is really cool. So so yeah, those those pops that happen. So what what's your favorite play like in the pre market? Because uh, don't we see a lot of those? They pop twenty percent. It could be after hours too. They pop and then like I know Michael Matthews calls it a straight spike. You know, yeah, and well, then, like, like my, my main like my the main trades that I really love to do is sometimes it happens and the beat stays there. You know what I mean? Like for example, yesterday. I, uh, I shorted uh, a stock which is called JT. It was it was 22 percent up, and there was a bid exactly on like it was like one one cent the spread. It was 20, uh, 0 0.73 with uh, 0 0.75 two cents, and like 0 0.73 was the last last trade. So I just shorted that stock. It was it was an illiquid stock, but I shorted that. Three, like it was 200 share, 2,000 shares, and in like the the, the my my price which I shorted it was already on the on the ask, and my bid was like 0 0.60 after that there wasn't any bid anymore, so I was just waiting for for that for somebody to just uh, uh, like sell on my, on my price just yeah. bid on my price. And it didn't happen last uh, on on yesterday. It happened this morning, so I made like zero. Uh, it was fifty cents. <laughs> in, Pretty good. In, so like, what, what? it was overnight, but it was an easy trade. I really like this these trades, but I also like the main ones that are that are more liquid that I really like. It was it's the two steps uh, in the morning. I I love that trade. So you want you want to go over that the two steps one for the people that don't know and also I I need to refresh too so let's see how you see the two steps what because that, that's one of my favorites too how would you yeah. describe it? Uh, first of all, there's a squeeze in the aftermarket, creating a a a, a, a movement and the the stock holds over there, which normally that means in the next day there will be a lot of pumpers there will be a lot of people who will be Oh man, this is the trade for today. This is the stock for today. And there's another thing that we that we we I'm really glad to be on this in this chat room because we can share the same thoughts about bumpers and I love that. I literally <laughs> yeah, yeah, love yeah. that. Yeah. And uh <laughs> and uh in the next day, there's a lot of people that the, the chat rooms, the Discord groups, uh they start, oh man, that, that's the stock for today. Just buy, 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 and the stock <laughs> yeah. way, they, they stop. Uh, the stock uh, squeezes more, even more from from the last uh, uh, the last price it had on the aftermarket the last day. So it, it makes a, set, a a two steps, which is up like a stair step. Uh, yeah, they they consolidates and then goes up again, and then it's all the way down. Yeah. That's the best. That's the beauty of the trade. I love that trade. The only thing that in my in my point, as I'm trading with uh, IB uh, interaction brokers. Sometimes I don't have stocks. Uh, I don't have locates to, to short. The shares, That's the main yeah. issue. Yeah, I don't have shares. But usually I do. And of course, like the main, I think one of the main things that, that I really love on pre-market, it's they don't have halts. We don't have halts. Yes. On. That's there's good a, and bad, of course. So, Sometimes so there's a, it, before you, can, you, you continue, there's a lot of inefficiencies with the pre-market and after hours, which is something we take advantage of. That, so yeah, Lucas, yeah. So that's one of the inefficiencies doesn't have halts uh yeah what else you want to continue just wanted to mention it it's easier for for like the bumpers to 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 manipulate the stock and and make it higher and squeeze it higher so yeah i know for example we have ultra 
so a lot of times the pumpers now they have Webull. So Webull is a popular broker for people that like to buy like Robinhood, but Webull's open at four in the morning. So when you got this guy Ultra and some pumpers talking about it, these guys are ready to buy it with their Webull account. You know, <laughs> so that's what Lucas is referring to. It, it's it's hilarious, you know, because like we know the end game. But and, and then um, when more brokers start to open up, there's going to be more selling pressure. And then when the real sellers come in, like the short sellers of the world with big accounts, when the closer to the open, it's usually done already. Yeah. And that's another thing, uh, another thing that made me only trade on pre-market and after market, after hours. It's since I, I still have a, a night to find job. Yeah. But in the beginning that I start uh, short selling, and even when I was uh, trading long, I still traded during the, the, the working hours. And like, man, there, I had a loss on DWAC that day. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. That day, I, I really like, I, I almost went margin call from, from, from my broker. It was a big loss for me. It was, it was like 25% of my account. It was big, a big loss. And that day I, I decided not anymore. I won't ever trade during my, like out, out tabbing uh, a meeting and seeing the stock went going up, uh, out tabbing, uh, out tabbing, out tabbing. Uh, come on, man. It's, it's impossible. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. So that was the day, um, what, what it went from like $10 to I can't, I, can't, I, I do remember that it was like probably 21, 20 October, 20th October over that period. And after that, I, 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 I not sure if it was October. No, it was October. I remember. I think it was October. And after, yeah. uh, on, on November 1st, I started only trading on pre-market and after market. Only that. Since then, I was I had one day, one red day since since November. Yeah, you know, if you keep the like when I like when I was only trading pre market, I just cut. Yeah, don't even the regular hours or it's a different animal, you know, like because I don't know what DWAC was doing that day. Did you trade a pre market that day or just intraday? No, it was it was probably intraday. It was intraday because like it might have been it might have went up pre-market and faded and then all of a sudden the regular hours it just goes crazy because like you know you, you just want to take the trade off and that's it if you're just going to trade pre-market i got that from the investors underground guy um he says separate them i think it's it works so yeah. so um do you so you okay so you have this schedule now pre-market you work in the day and after hours it's going great um do you how in the future do you want to trade intraday or how do you plan on doing that? Now that I'm in, in the shed group with you guys, my FOMO is in the highest level ever. <laughs> like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all the trades that you guys talking about, look at this, look at this. No man, cover, short cover, short cover. I'm, I'm losing all the trades. <laughs> that's sad, but you have. Yeah, that's why. So we, we have two separate groups, one intraday and one regular. That, that now yeah. you see why. Now you see why. <laughs> yeah, and I muted. I muted the 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 regular hours group, so I I, w I wouldn't like see the noise uh, from yeah. from WhatsApp and stuff. But I I I I can't avoid watching it, uh, and that happens sometimes. I I, I trade on pre on a regular hours, but I try yeah. not to. <laughs> I know for for me, man, it's just uh, the pre market was just a great way to to do a good strategy that's high percentage and good good odds, and then get experience and then little because I was scared to trade regular hours for like two years. I only traded pre-market. And then recently uh, the past year and a half, I've been doing regular hours and it's work. But without that, if you just threw me into regular hours, I don't know if I might've had, you know, had a lot more trouble. Yeah, I, I really, I really do plan to, to start being full-time. It won't be, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think it will be more than one year for me from now because I'm steady growing my account to the point that I can like yeah. pay my bills. And um, that's, that's the main goal. <laughs> yeah, no, you have, yeah, you're doing it right. I see the profit chart and you're winning. Everything is going, is going steady. So that's what, that's what you, you want. And uh, yeah, you know, you, you're doing the right, you're trading the way you should be trading. You know what I mean? Small yeah. size. Uh, oh. You learned your lesson with DWAC. Uh, you're being disciplined with the pre-market and after hours. Um, 
yeah, I like the way you're going about it. That's yeah, that's why I wanted to. It was good. It's good to talk to you now, finally. Yeah, thank you, man. And uh, uh, that's the same on my side. Uh, and then regarding my my trading style and like my weaknesses, I have. I of course I have a lot of weaknesses. That we are not perfect, uh, but I, I can mention two big weaknesses on my side that I need, really need to improve. First, uh, I still uh, I, I need to to hold the the, the, the short more. I, I still get anxious to to cover soon, like yeah. so. I, I, I'm I'm doing like five percent trades, which is the main goal. But I, I've back tested. That that's one thing that I are you I, I try to do, and I will keep doing it. I back tested. If I hold like all my my trades uh, from pre market until the end of the day, I would probably do ten percent more on average. Uh huh. And um, are there any outliers you consider float or if it's a no, smaller no. float in the volume? Yeah, of, and course, all that? of course, it's an average. Of course, there's some of the stocks that probably went like way much higher and I would get squeezed and burned. But in the in average, I, I could like make some features to understand which one was uh, an outlier. Yeah. But in the, on average, I, I would uh, make 10% more on all of my trades, which so is... It's a nice number. I, did you so Michael Matthews? He uses a trailing stop. I I don't use it, but I, and I eventually maybe I'll try it out. But like that could solve the problem. So you have a yeah. trailing stop. I don't know. I've never used it, but I, I've heard him say it. And I know he holds a lot of them, but he has a tighter risk too. You know, so me, I my risk is a is a, a wide risk. So I have to be very careful to avoid the low floaters with a lot of volume and cat good catalysts. You know what I mean? Uh, how about you? So when you consider that, because you know, it's, it's so tempting, right? You just, you just hold it because you see a lot of these just continue to fade. So what do you, what, like what from your back testing, which, how can you like prevent getting from those nasty ones? That's what, you know, yeah. you know what I mean? Those nasty ones, they can get. Yeah, really for nasty. sure. I, I have some, some, some names to 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 mention for example uh, the one that I, the, the only trade that I, I i really got smoked after november was husa you uh, age usa which the was oil the, one. Yeah. the oil yeah. one and uh, i really got smoked but it went back to like the place that i, I shorted after that so if yeah. i could yeah. kept the, the 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 trade even like for five days i would be profiting but i i couldn't hold at that time i i, I, I got afraid so yeah. it happens, but like the, the other weaknesses that I was going to mention, which is completely re related to that. It's since I got, uh, there's, there was one trade that went a hundred percent, no, 1000% up from my price. And I really got scared that time. It was the biggest outlier and it was, I, I forgot the name, it, it's B, probably BFSC. I don't remember the name. It was one day that it, we went like from BYFC? five to one. No, it, it, I, I don't remember the name. I I, I can't. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I'll, I'll share but with yeah, you later. Yeah, for but sure. It, it went from five dollars to twenty five dollars in minutes. It was a big squeeze. It, it was a low flow, and they went down the next minute. Yeah. Thank God. Uh, thank God. Uh, Interactive Brokers wasn't uh, <laughs> didn't have enough time to to margin call my, my yeah. trade to, to cover me so it was everything fine but that that day uh i i, I understood that i my 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 risk management needed to improve and that's the one that that's the, the main weakness weaknesses right now which is i have doubled my account and i wasn't able to increase my size because i'm still afraid from that trade you know what i mean yeah no that's what that's why i know last year i had in june i i did all my i I thought it was in our due diligence. Like I checked the, it was, I think it was AEMD. I'm not sure. I checked the float. I checked the news, nothing. And it just, it, for some reason it went from like $2 to like 20 something dollars in like 30 minutes. And then it came back down, but like, it was just scared the scared the shit out of me. But, um, <laughs> you know, and now I'm in this other chat room too of Ali angel. She was in Sykes room also, but, uh, she's does only fundamentals and she likes these conspiracy theories and stuff. I, I'm it's, it's fun to think about. So these kind of weird moves that happen like that, like what you mentioned, the one I mentioned is because like the, 
this is the the theory that the placement agents or the investment the people that are they have shares to dump they're testing liquidity so they're oh. they're they're throwing in some buy orders there like to like shoot it up to see where that where that those levels are that they can you know and they can make note of to sell later in intraday or or something but they're they're testing it's like testing for the mines you know in the field to see which one's going to explode <laughs> you know yeah makes sense makes sense yeah and that's so a I, funny story about that trade i didn't see that trade uh-huh. i went i went i went to take a nap after i shorted the stock and i started squeezing <laughs> and when i woke up that, that oh, moment shit. happened <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i didn't see that it was oh the you best didn't see nap. it oh so i didn't so see you... it was the best nap nap of my life because i didn't got any i i got, I got scared of course because i yeah, wasn't yeah. I almost got like uh, uh margin call but like i didn't, didn't i didn't see it. i didn't see it it was the perfect trade of my life because <laughs> I, i didn't even you, you know um when I, was, when i was learning from tim sykes he would hold so i didn't understand he holds some trades overnight over the weekend and i'm like isn't he scared that the, you know this thing is going to do something over the like but like he and it, you know the thing is he wouldn't something would go go down and then it would come back up and he would pretend it never happened he just announced oh i i i just sold this trade for a profit and i was like what about the unrealized and what so he you know it's like out of sight is out of out of sight out of mind <laughs> you know what i mean if you don't see it it never existed you know so exactly <laughs> <laughs> but um oh man um anything else so like what about the after hours so what so okay so you started with the pre market and then what about the after hours did you, did you always trade after hours or when did when did you start to realize okay after hours behaves kind of similar to pre market yeah that's that was the main uh the main idea For me, it, it, it works pretty much the same. Of course, on after hours, we have news. We usually don't have it at, at 4 a.m., which impacts more, of course, and squeezes more. We, you need to be more careful on, on, at the, the after hours. But it, it's pretty much the same. So for me, like when coming back to the main strategy, for me, the main, the, the, the most, uh, the most, The, the best strategy that I'm like more more comfortable to to increase size it's a a, a a spiking stock with no news and we have a lot of them not like not sure if all these trades would have enough volume but they pretty much crack in the next minutes so that's why that's why it's important to 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 keep tracking the the pumpers because there's a lot yeah. of pumping on the aftermarket and one thing that Before I started trading on the market and after market, uh, I realized something that uh, I'm pretty sure that you guys, you, for example, said some, some day ago that you're going to stop uh, shorting the last hour. Probably you're going to wait for the five minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Right. If you, yeah, I mean, and I, and I've, been, I've been squeezed so much the last hour and then the, I noticed it goes up a little bit more. The first 10 minutes and after hours and then go straight down and i'm like why didn't i just like go go eat <laughs> food and then come back you know exactly. hey so you notice that too yeah yeah for me for me i, I noticed that too it's the same so it's like you can get sometimes some really good entries on the after hours and you know 10 15 minutes it pays to be lazy sometimes you know <laughs> or being busy and being busy um i i remember recently mdvl i don't know if you had shares of that in, in interactive brokers but it did that i thought it, it was up i thought i was being a good trader like i waited until five minutes before the close it yeah. spiked up for no reason at the end uh it was up like 50 60 i said oh this is a great entry and then Probably in the last few hours right? i think last yeah, I think, week yeah yeah, yeah. Not that long ago, just a few days ago. And then it goes up 70, 80, 90% after hours. Oh my God. What if, I should have just waited. Yeah. <laughs> so did did you trade that one too? I did, but at that time I I I I I was trading on trade zero because over there there was uh some some locates and I, I, I did exactly the trade, the trade that you were supposed to do because because but you 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 were did it after hours, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's It's um I remember also uh, a few weeks ago when I was in Puerto Rico there was BCEL I remember this one on Friday I've never seen anything like it it goes 
on like some weak news and it has a big float of decent sized company it goes from like a dollar fifty to like or to like six seven dollars or something like that it, uh and but the, the last five minutes it went like create the craziest volume came in this is on a friday and if you waited till after hours to short it uh 20 minutes after the close you it's an epic trade it goes from like seven dollars down to four dollars you know i don't know if you saw that one did you see it i i I remember that and uh one thing that i uh i remember which is like one bad pattern it's not a better pattern but nowadays all the insider buying are getting squeezed did you did you notice that all the yeah, insider buying insider. pumpers are are are, are pumpers <laughs> yeah. and, and, and like it doesn't make any sense yeah <laughs> like a hundred percent up just for insider makes buying no which is we, we we were talking then right right we we said are these guys the they started buying are, are they able to sell to dump the shares and probably they are so it's the easiest way to make money Yes. Yeah, so, so MDVL, yeah, you know, people they ignore. They say, "Oh, you shouldn't care about the reason or the fundamental or whatever the news." I I think it's they're missing out. It's good to consider it because if you know it shouldn't be like the just the end at the end, the insider bought for a dollar six cents. For it to go up to three dollars, uh, two days later, that's insane. So they're up. That means they're up on their investment double in in a day and a half makes you know so so that's a good opportunity to short yeah we know it doesn't make any sense but we also know this is not sustainable it, it's not going to last so we use the, the knowledge we know with technicals and all that to to, to short it and to you know and that mdvl you know it's still even today it managed to go up like 30 percent uh ssr squeeze because and but because shorts are still stuck in it from that uh Yeah. from the but the, the, the catalyst yeah the catalyst of all of that was the insider buy at a dollar and six cents and it, the squeeze has been going on for like a week now it's been a good how good, much good is one. it right now 270 280 i'm not sure i traded it today i'm trying to find it i can't i think i took it out i, I remember that when, when you got when you got squeezed that i traded on, on the aftermarket I, i traded around i shorted around three yeah that, around that was like the top uh the other day i remember But what a good entry just to wait until the squeeze, you know, um, and the after hours. Yeah, and the 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 main point is that I call, call I always cover too soon. <laughs> That's the yeah, the, of the, course. <laughs> I need so, to get I need to prove. <laughs> so how do you go about that? So so recently I've been looking into Lucas. I've been looking into okay. So I always cover too soon, but I've been looking to reinitiate my shorts. So when I cover and it goes up a little bit, as long as my thesis is intact. I just reshort it and then like so if when I when I count the total of of uh what I've shorted in that area it's usually a little bit more than like if I would have just held it you know what I mean so yeah that's what I've been experimenting with but well, what about you do you plan but everybody everybody's different so like everybody's patience level and and the way they trade is different so do you think you see you like getting better at holding it a little longer or adding to it rotating around the core you know what I mean Or how how do you how do you think? Uh, what what I usually do, what I usually do is is the following. Uh, I usually I usually reshort, but I keep my my stop really 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 close because if if I reshort and the the price goes up from my from the last peak, never it's gonna squeeze. So when I reshort, I usually set my stop from the last the last higher price. So. That's a way to prevent myself to from getting really bad squeeze. So okay, so can you talk about the squeeze? So how how do you know? <laughs> I, I, I don't how do you really feel the know. squeeze. <laughs> how do you feel? I don't the really know, happen, but like you know? <laughs> one one thing that comes to my mind is I usually uh, check from uh, IBs. Uh, yeah. If it's not available for me, it's a sign that it's probably sign. that there's there's less shares. Yeah. Uh, to to be shorted, yeah. but also it's it's like something that happened already before. Like all my my squeezes, of course they come back and I yeah. still can profit. But all my squeezes, they 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 uh, that that I, I was in the trade, it happened when I reshorted and they went up from the the last uh, higher price, which was the first time that I shorted. 
right? Gotcha. And oh, I have another question for you that just came to mind. So you're you you you're into this algorithm stuff. You probably know a lot more than I do about it, that kind of world. Um, so in the after hours, I was told uh, from like Ali's chat room. She's really good with that stuff. She she re- records the the price action and then goes over it and tries to see how the algorithm is working. And it's, it's really really fascinating the way she does it. But anyway, so she was telling me that there's algos in the after hours. What they do is they have an algo in the middle of the, in the regular hours, and then when the market closes, they they switch the server, the algo to another server for the after hours. Now I I have and she says they do it the same for the pre market, but like as we know at four in the morning, there's no algos at four in the morning. There's algos maybe later yeah. seven uh, an hour before the open, whatever. And that's another inefficiency of the pre market that I like, um, that we both like. Uh, the, you know, the, the less algo presence. Now, what do you think about um, algos in the after hours or, or yeah, about algos trying to force a squeeze maybe? Yeah, I'm not that sure if it's the algos that force the squeeze, but of course they help, right? Because we, we can see pumpers uh, pumping on the after hours also, but I'm not that sure uh, w- how they work but for sure if, if they are there they are probably squeezing uh they, they are looking probably from stocks that has less shares to to short yeah and probably uh squeezing because what i usually see it's the exact the same stocks that are like that there's no shares on might be they, they are probably the ones that are gonna squeeze on aftermarket that's great you know when i was trading pre-market only uh, 2020, 2021, I was only using interactive brokers and I was like, man, this is, this is great. Like, uh, the ones that they don't have shares of are the ones I don't want to trade. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know cause I would see them cause in the, you know, I would see them all squeeze. I'm like, Oh, every, thank God I didn't have shares of that. You know, <laughs> you know, um, it happens a lot. Yeah. So, so when you see this sh- in IB actually, What's cool about IB, they have the inventory there. I don't know if you have it on your on your thing. Yeah, you get to see yeah. them uh, taking away the shares. Uh, the other brokers don't have that. So, like, when you see the shares going away, you can see, you can almost sense a squeeze is coming, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know the float and you know the technicals of the, the resistance levels. And you know maybe in the, in the past, in the recent past, it squeezed before. You know, it can do it again. The stocks have a personality. So, yeah. yeah. And, and also, uh, on share, we were talking about, like, sometimes when you, you place an order uh, really below the price, the actual price on so IB, maybe you get uh, executive, you get filled. And that's true. I, I tried, like, this week, last week, and, and it happens. So, okay, so when there's no inventory, I'm trying to remember what uh, the, how that works. When there's no inventory... Uh, supposedly you can't short it, but then, but if you put an order below the bid, like, you know, not really like good. a significant amount, you, yeah. it fills you. And I yeah, think that's not, because not all the time, but it happens time. sometimes. Yeah. That's, that's a hack. So IB has those kind of little hacks. Uh, I learned, there was another one from Tim. I, I learned that there's a lot of inefficiencies in the market in general. It used to surprise me when Tim Sykes was saying, um, Oh, there's an OTC hack. You can actually short it in the pre-market with IB. I was like, what? What that doesn't make any sense? But it's just sometimes there's these little inefficiencies and hacks that you just gotta know. And that's why it's good to have a group of people, a group of traders, and always looking for things like that. Yeah, yeah that, that's that's, cool. that's it. It's pretty cool. So um, so okay, uh, so Lucas, I was gonna ask you, so how do you go about back testing? What's your what's your thing about journaling, back testing? I think that's important, so like to get confidence sure. in your trading. So how did you go about that? Uh, regarding journal, I have four. <laughs> I have Kifo. Uh, I have Trader Trader Sync, of course, Profly, and there's one. It's it's called Trader. Trader View. No, it's I forgot the name. Trade this, maybe. Let me. Uh huh. So you have a process. Okay, so you have Kimfo uploads all your studs, stuff. And so I, how do you, you journal more? Trader Sync has like all the, all the stats. I like Trader Sync for all the stats. So how, how do you go about it? What's your, 
What's your uh, like? What, what I usually doing? what I usually do it's uh, I I tag my my trades between pre market and after market. I, I actually maybe last week I, I sent you guys like usually my 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 biggest uh, my biggest profits are in the pre market. Yeah. Usually, usually the, the the there's a lot of trades on after hours, which is profitable. But the main the main trades that are I'm not profitable are the the after hour swings, which is of course the trades that I, that I got squeezed and after on after market, and I uh, I, I kept from the next day. So of, like if if you really uh, make analysis, pre market it's the best best time to trade. Yeah. Sure. You know. So what what's your opinion though? Like why? So it, it, what's the edge there? Like, you know, so I, I was scared in the beginning of telling people about pre-market. I was like, oh, man, then it's going to go away. But I don't think people are going to wake up that early, you know? No. No. <laughs> it's sure tough. Won't. Yeah, it's tough. And, and you need to know everything you, you need to know. You need to study and be prepared and know your stats and back testing. And then on top of that, you need to wake up early. So I don't think it's going to go away, you know? Yeah. So, and then, uh, I, when you when you, for example, post on your social social media your your sleep cycle, I can't. Oh relate. yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah let's man. talk about I, that. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I can I, I can relate like with you all day. Like when I see because, for example, today I, I had like one hour lunch. What I did, half an hour sleep. <laughs> that that's the, the way they uh, yeah. like. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, how yeah. it works. That's the way. But if you want to make money. You, you need to do what it, what it takes, right? Yeah. That, if, it works, if it works for you, then you got to keep doing it. That's what I see. That's that's why I still trade pre-market. I, I make, I'm make i doing well in the regular hours, but pre-market is just has been so good for me that uh, I got to continue doing it, you know? Yeah. But, um, but yeah, the sleep cycle, I wanted to mention to whoever's listening. So the sleep cycle Lucas is referring to is that I have this Fitbit and it tracks. I have the, the app on my phone and it tracks the sleep. It tracks it pretty good. And uh, yeah, I average, I try to get five to six hours of sleep a day already. That's a, that's a, for a lot of people, they freak out when they hear that, but like, yeah, like five, six hours. And usually it'll be like two or three hours, one big one. And then like half an hour here, half an hour there, 20 minutes here. <laughs> so when I showed the log, Lucas is like, Oh, that looks like mine. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's ex- that's it. That's exactly what I what I, every time that I see your your sleep cycle, I see man, that's exactly what I do. <laughs> so crazy. so like so how how do you go about it? So let's we're gonna start to close up soon. But um, how do you go about it? Because like the way I do it is like the first hour pre market, four in the morning Eastern to five in the morning. I'll try to be as alert as I can, and then the first half hour, five five to five thirty, I might see okay, maybe I can take a nap now, uh, at five thirty to six thirty. Um, and then maybe a two-hour nap. Is that what you do? Something like that? Exactly the same. Probably around 5.30 uh, New York time. To Depends. Sometimes I, I come back and trade on, on pre-market. Sometimes I just I just wake up for the the, the, the working day. Right? Yeah. So, but but, but it, it usually like one hour, two hours sleep uh, nap uh, after one hour and a half trading on pre-market. Yeah. And That's you true. can tell sometimes when the market is extra dead in the pre-market, you can just like sleep a little longer. Yeah. Um, great. So, okay. So, so it's hard to wrap it up. So Lucas, where, where, what are your plans now with trading and like the, in the future, your future with trading? Yeah. My, my, my main goal right now is to keep growing up my account to the point that I could stop uh, working. And uh I really, I really want to keep uh, increasing my, my, my YouTube channel because man, it, it's a knowledge that nobody, nobody in Brazil is talking about. It's crazy. It's crazy. And if I can like influence 10 people to, to I, I probably am the only Brazilian in, in the challenge, right? So if I can influence 10, 10 persons, 10, 10 people in, in Brazil, I would be glad because Everybody here is so focused in two stocks. That's one thing that I, I always say to the, the, even in my work, like since I'm working with day trading the same, uh, I feel like here in Brazil, we, you know, we, we trade stocks. We don't trade setups because we only have two, because what's the point here in Brazil? Uh, we don't have this kind of volatility in equities. We, we only have leverage, really big leverage 
on the futures. So that's why everybody goes to these only two tickers, which is the dollar index and the, the index future index. In this future. So there's a lot of opportunity if you trade a setup, if you find the, the right setup, if you find the right stock to short or to buy, I don't know, but it's 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 awesome. The, the, the penny stocks niche, it's it's fantastic. I mean, I saw your channel. I mean, I don't speak Portuguese. I speak some Spanish, though, as I kind of understand. But uh, you have quite a bit of material. So, like, how, how much uh, videos is that? It's, it's well, well done too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the beginning, I I started creating like more, it's not institutional, but it's it's more like what is penny stocks? What what are like OTCs? So it, it was more like really really uh, educational. It's everything educational, every educational over there. But after like the meantime, uh, what I'm trying to do is we have like really we have like ten. Penny stocks in Brazil, really. It's you can count on my on, on both hands. So uh, sometimes I, I really create some videos about this penny stocking in Brazil, and they I, I have a, I have a lot of traffic traffic because everybody's looking for the stocks. They, there's the one that I did like last last week, which my my performance on YouTube it, it goes like four times my usual videos. It's sad because nobody's. It, like, really watching for penny stocking, they want to know what it's, what's going to happen with that stock in Brazil, but it works. But in, in like my main idea from from my channel is to really create uh, uh, not a com I, I really think about it as a community of people people in Brazil who really want to learn about it because the the main point it's really lonely, right? Trading, yeah. In, in pre, mostly in pre-market also. So that's why I'm really get, glad to be a part of the, the chat room and uh, can like share uh, mindsets and share trades with you guys. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, man, it's been cool. Um, I want to put you in contact, remind me, with Eduardo. I, I did a inter I interviewed him as well. He's he's from Venezuela and he's was trying he's he has like a a Discord now and has educational content for for Latinos and South American people from Chile, from Colombia, and all that, and it was kind of a similar situation where like people are just they don't know, you know, they they don't know that the market is is uh, that they can trade it like the way that we do, you know what I mean? And with the with the knowledge and and things. So instead of just trading those two instruments that you mentioned, <laughs> you know, um, but yeah, no, it, it's good to to put education out there, you know. So and I'm pretty sure that the you know, hopefully the right people listen to it and then it, it grows from there. You're able to, uh, to change some people's lives, you know, that's pretty cool. But, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. That you're doing that. And I'll have all that information in the show notes and, uh, yeah, we'll do that. So uh, Lucas, so to finish this up, um, what about any book recommendations? Do you have any book recommendations? I do. I do. Uh, and I, and I got that from you. It's mobile traders. It's fantastic. Normal that traders, yeah, 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 yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. I have one quote from I don't remember the trader, but it, it, it exactly what I think and helps me when I go on every trade. A guy, I don't remember the name of the guy, but he says like, "What makes you that confident to be a short seller?" And he says, "Because I know on the right, because I know I'm on the right side of the trade." And it, it, it's exactly what I feel when I get like, I, 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 I freak out. Nowadays, I freak out every time I go long because I, I can't hold it because I know it's going to be, it's going to crash. So, yeah, you know, I, you know actually, man, uh, I, I launched something by, by mistake the other day. I didn't even know how to get out of it because I, I, thought, you, <laughs> I thought you just hit the bid. I was hitting the bid. I was like, oh my God, it's not hitting the bid. It's like, I got to hit the ask. <laughs> so I don't even know how to long anymore. Yeah, that, so. that's a really good. That's a really good book, and uh, there's another one that I, I, I was reading. It's from Buy Side, but I think it's a good trade, a, a good book. It's from uh, Nicholas Darvas. Not sure if you know it. Oh, uh, Nicholas, Nicholas Darvas. Darvas, How I Made Two Million in the Stock Market. How I Made Two Million. Yeah, it's yeah, a really nice book. I it's have it really on audio. Cool. Very, very good book. Yeah, yeah, it is. Cool. I'll put that all in the show notes. So, Lucas, yeah, any any other thoughts uh, before we get out of here? Well, I think that the main, like, I really want to thank you again 
it's a pleasure to be here to speak with you and with all the community trading trading community. Um, I really hope one day soon soon uh, Team Cyber is gonna be is gonna uh, do the conference and I'll be for sure oh, there. Oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I think he's talking. Do about they, it. Do he already had? There's a, think, already a date. Yeah, no? uh, I I think so. I've been hearing about it. So you got to buy an NFT to go to the conference. So. Ah, come on, <laughs> <laughs> come on, Chief. So, yeah. So um, but yeah, that's interesting. I never been to one of those events and and uh, it'd be cool to go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it would be cool, awesome man. to meet you guys for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Likewise. All right, Lucas. So thanks for coming on the podcast, man. And I know you got to get rested because we grew up early in the morning. So <laughs> I'll see you at 4 a.m. <laughs> see you right. at 4 a.m., friend. All right. Thank take you, care, David. man. All right. Have thanks, nice Lucas. Bye.